taxes on anything. The Roth IRA and 401k and 403b, they actually operate for the most part the same. They have the same contribution uh, limits, <coughs> tax-free earnings, etc. cetera. Um, but when you take $150 out, you lose $150 in your paycheck because it's all after-tax money. Um, the difference is, though, when I retire and I start drawing this money out of my Roth account, I will pay no taxes on it. So it's good. this $150 is going to sit in there and going to grow and grow, and I'm never going to pay any taxes on any of those earnings or any of it ever again. So the question always is, which is better? And there's no straightforward answer for that. Um, in some circumstances, the traditional is better because you can put more away. In other circumstances, the Roth is better because you won't have to pay taxes on it later in life. And it really is more of a tax question that we won't get into at this moment. Um, but know that those are the two different types. And the big difference there is, is it pre-tax money going in or after-tax money going in? And am I going to have to pay taxes on it later? Or am I, have I paid taxes on it already and I'm never going to have to pay again? Um, all right, now we get to the, f the fun part. Uh, Kayla here. Kayla is a great saver, right? Say yes. Yeah. Thank you. Kayla, you've saved up, how long have you been working for? 40, 40 years, are you 65? Sure. Okay, Kayla's 65, she's been saving up. How much money do you have saved up now? Um, One million dollars. She's got a million dollars saved up, and Kayla's like, sweet, I got a million dollars. And well, how many of you have ever seen DuckTales before? Yeah. Ah. That is the Donald Duck and like the other the little kid dog. The little, yeah, yeah. And, and Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh, and, okay, you've seen that. Yeah. And, and Uncle Scrooge. And, yeah. And, and yeah, he rolls in his money at the beginning, like the intro to that cartoon. This is what I used to watch when I came home from oh, school. Yeah. And he would like dive in. He had this big vault and he had tons of gold coins and he'd like swim around in his gold coins. Um, well, Kayla's had this lifelong dream, whether you realize it or not, that she could fill up her swimming pool with money and go swimming in it. So she's 65 years old. She's saved up a million dollars. She's like, I got this huge pile of money. I'm so going to take it out and put it in my swimming pool and go swimming in it. So she cashes out. She takes that whole lump sum out. Well, because this was your 401k money and because you hadn't paid any taxes on it yet, you get to pay taxes on it now. And the fact that you decided to take all one million of it out, the U.S. government's like, Kayla, you're my best friend. Because the way they're going to look at it, and the way the IRS is going to look at it, they're going to be like, you made a million dollars this year. Guess which tax bracket you're put in? The highest tax bracket. So you're going to pay about 35% of that. So your, your $1 million just became 650000 And your pool is just not full. But Kayla's... Kayla's so that's Kayla's problem. So you probably don't ever want to really take a lump sum withdrawal. And we'll talk about this in relation to changing jobs as well in a minute. But you, you really don't want to do that lump sum withdrawal. But you, what you really don't want to do is what Matt did. See, Matt was actually an even better saver than Kayla. He was able to save up a million dollars by the time he was 55. So, there you go. He has a million dollars, 55, he's like, but he has the same dream. Actually, he, he has a slightly different, he always wanted to carry around a briefcase loaded with cash. And so he's like, I'm going to cash out. Now, the problem is, Matt, you're 55. According to the IRS, you're not retirement age yet. And so they're going to tax you that million dollars, just like they did her. So they're going to take that 35%. And you know what else they're going to do? They're going to take another 10% because you're not old enough. The government really does not want you to take it out. They encourage you to leave it in. And the way they do that is they penalize you if you take it out early. So your million dollars is only $550,000. Sorry. Um, fortunately, you don't have to ever take all your money out. You never do. 
the way you really should do it is taking out little chunks at a time. You could do you could set it up so that every month they send you a check for two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or whatever you need. Um, or you could just withdraw on your account like it's a uh, like it's your bank account. They'll send you a check and they'll or they'll do direct excuse me direct transfer right into your checking account and you can spend your money. Um, I realize you guys are a long ways off from retiring and worrying about that. And generally, by the time you've saved up a million dollars, you've probably figured out a few of these things that you shouldn't take it all out. But where it really hits you is when you're 25 years old. <coughs> you're 25, you had your first job right out of college, but now you've been offered a new job at a better place. And you, had, you remembered from Mr. Stapert's personal finance class when you got that first job at age 23 that, yeah, I should be saving. So you had put away a couple thousand dollars, and you had like, $5,000 in your 401k, but then you were switching jobs. And they told you, you can't leave your money in the 401k, and so you're like, oh, all right, well, what do I do with it? So what do you do with it? Do you take it out? No, do not take it out. What you need to do at that point is a, a rollover. So you got your new job at a new place, and if they have a 401k there, you roll your money into that 401k. And what that means is instead of you had your old 401k with Lincoln and your new 401k is with uh, Prudential, instead of Lincoln sending you a check, they send all your money directly over to Prudential and you never touch it. And if you never touch it, you never get fined and you never get taxed and the money can continue to grow. But what normally happens is you get this letter after you quit your job that says you still have money in your 401k, you need to withdraw it, here's some forms, and people go, I don't know what to do. Where do I, what do I do with this? Oh, it looks, looks like it's got a spot for my checking account. I'll just put that account in there. And your money gets sent to your checking account, and then you owe a tax bill at the end of the year. So do not, do not, do not, do not, do not ever take a withdrawal unless you're retired and unless you're doing it um, small amounts at a time. Um, that, that's really the moral of the story. One other thing you could do when you get to retirement, this is going back to there. Um, you know, some, the one nice thing about that traditional pension plan was that you had a guaranteed income. If I retired at age 65 and they promised to pay me $40,000 a year, that would last until I died, and I didn't have to ever worry about having an income again. That's pretty nice. And some people really want that comfort. Well, you can essentially buy your own pension. It's called an annuity. An annuity is like a, um, it's an investment vehicle that, what, it's through an insurance company, and they will promise, like a pension plan, to pay you a certain amount of money until the day you die. There are a lot of variations on how they exactly work, but that's the basic idea. And so Matt could take his million dollars and go purchase an annuity from Pacific Life. And he took his million dollars and they'd say, well, we expect you're gonna die in 20 years. And so we'll pay you uh, $50,000 a year until you die. If he lives more than 20 years, that was probably a good good uh, investment for him. If he dies at age 67, and he retired at 65, well, he got two years of income for his million dollars. And that's really the game the insurance company plays, is they, they, because they have so many clients, they can guesstimate when you're gonna die. The guy whose job that is is the actuary. He figures out when people are gonna die, and then can figure out how much you should be uh, paying somebody to make it still profitable. Um, 